in the gospel text of today, which is taken from the gospel of John chapter 3, verses 31 to 36, we will hear the last witness of John the Baptist in the gospel of John. In the gospel of John, the Baptist is primarily a witness. He witnesses to Jesus, he proclaims to people who Jesus is, and he leads people to Jesus. As a matter of fact, right at the beginning of his gospel, when he has two of his disciples standing with him in John chapter 1 verses 35 to 40, and he sees Jesus passing by, he points Jesus out, to his disciples. So John is really a martyr. John is really a witness. John is someone who leads people to Jesus and in this last witness he speaks about Jesus as having come from above. It is Jesus who has come from above, who is the pre-existent one, who is the vehicle of the Spirit, who is the Son of God whom he proclaims. And very poignantly, John says that his testimony has not been accepted. It is true that he has been very clear in his testimony. He has been very forceful in his testimony. He has been a testimony without mincing words. And yet, very poignantly, he speaks about the fact that even though he has been so eloquent in his pointing out to Jesus, his testimony has not been accepted. And yet in the second part, John speaks about Jesus who has with him the spirit and the authority of God. Everything has been given to Jesus by God and so Jesus can do with it what he wants. And what Jesus wants, John continues to say, is to give the spirit without reserve is to make no distinction between people and to simply communicate the Spirit of God as God's only Son. What is important to realize is that it is not so much the communication of the Spirit of God as our reception of the Spirit of God. Today, like in the time of John, God keeps revealing himself to us through the numerous incidents which take place in our lives. Because we have closed our hearts and our minds like the people at the time of Jesus, we are unable to witness and experience the communication of the Spirit. What is required today is an open mind and an open heart because the Spirit of God is still being given and given without reserve, given without distinction. If we dare to open our hearts and minds, if we dare to be able to understand that God communicates his spirit, then we can receive that spirit of God and become indeed a new creation. How will you show that you have opened your mind and heart to receive God's free spirit.